This is the heartland of America, the backbone of the American beef economy. We're here. The wildfires burning out of control in the Texas panhandle. Viewers may find these images disturbing. The wildfires took everything we had. I see the destruction and the devastation everywhere. Thousands of livestock have been lost and hundreds of homes and other structures decimated. I've never seen a fire like this. Lots of cattle lost. All of this place is burned. With well over a million acres turned to ash. It got so big and the wind got so high that it scattered everybody out. The flames were probably 15 feet tall. Oh my gosh. Probably the meanest fire I've ever fought. It looked like somebody throwing big old red balls, just throwing them out there. Didn't land out there and light off again. You fought what you could, where you could, you can knock it out. And then whenever if you're not paying attention, it circle around behind you and cover you up. Surrounded by flames, authorities tonight saying there are no exits out. We had no air support. I don't know where the air support was. Even four or five trucks. We can't hold it. Get out of there. Let's go out. We got too many spots. You were on your own. This hay hauler said he'd, he'd went out north of uh, Canadian to deliver hay and went to this old man's house and uh, he had 450 mama cows. And he said, sir, how many bales of hay is it going to take to get you through? And he said, son, I don't need any hay. He said, I've got one cow left. Can you imagine? A lot of cattle died in the fire. It came so hard so fast, uh, most of them weren't able to, to get away from it. Uh, most of them die of smoke inhalation. They'll run and run and run from it until they can't, and they just die of smoke inhalation. You can, you can follow the fire line and see they'll all start giving up at the same time, and they'll just start scattering. You know, they'll be in a line where they're starting to give up, or they'll get to a corner, and it'll all catch them in the corner. I've never seen so many dead cattle dead animals. 5,000, 10,000, um, you know, it, it's, it's really hard to say right now, but it's going to be pretty dramatic. A lot of the cattle were already bloated and, and, and burnt and dead. But then I had cattle that didn't have hair, didn't have the ears, lips, eyelids all burnt off. And they were still walking and they come into the feed truck. And that's, uh, that's the hard part of ranching, having to get out with your rifle and shoot your own cattle. I had nightmares for weeks. I have a really good friend of mine that called me one day and said, I'm done. I, I don't want to do it anymore. But it has to be done. And so it was the first round of it for my boys, and it didn't take them long to get sick of it. People here have a lot of grit and, and a lot of fight in them, but you can see it in their eyes behind their smile. They're tired of looking at it, they're tired of talking about it, and they're tired of thinking about it. A lot of the ranchers are, are getting up there in age. I'm 93 last December. At that age, would you start over? I've never thought about quitting or giving up. Cows need fed or they need looked after. I always have a reason to get up the next morning. I think everybody needs something to get up for the next day. As of today, all the fires are out, but that's that means work begins. It's gonna take months to years to get back on our feet. This was my living, and it's it's shattered. These are our friends and neighbors. Uh, if, if we don't help, who will? You feel bad for people driving six hours with a load of hay, you know, because they've got family they, they need to be with. That is hard. It's really hard. I had a, a guy from Decatur, Texas uh, come in. He, he got here around 9.30 that morning and we unloaded and he said, uh, I'll, see you, I'll see you this evening. And I said, you what now? He said, I'm driving back to Decatur, Texas and getting another load and I'll be back this evening. And I thought, how amazing somebody would do that. If we don't, who will? Because they're not coming for us. Uh, we got to take care of ourselves. When it came to my place, I'd help my neighbors till I had to leave, and it was me and one guy at my house. Todd Keith, 
it if it wasn't for him I'd have lost everything I had we got to stick together this is what ranchers do this is what farmers do this is what Texas does neighbors helping neighbors it's just unbelievable but that only goes so far when it's gone we have to sell everything we have and if we don't have cattle out here we can't feed the world this world lives on what we raise there is lots of good people out there i found that out i was, I was really kind of down on humanity i thought you know this world's going downhill but after this there's more good that came out of this than than the bad we we just can't give in we can't let up i've had losses but my heart's broke more for my neighbors than it is me. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need new tires on the truck before I can come back. But if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. This fire has been one of the worst things that I've ever experienced in nature. And the kindness of people is some of the best I've ever seen in humankind. My neighbor came to me and said, I'm here to help you. And I said, get out of here. This fire's bad. He said, I got it. He crawled on the front of my truck. He said, you didn't leave me. I'm not leaving you. We're here. <laughs>